Well, I welcome you to worship here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay, whether you're, you have made it out of the snow and, uh, and made it to the, the sanctuary here on Silver Spring Drive, or whether you decided it would be better and safer to stay at home and, and get the service that way. Uh, we're, we're, we're grateful that you're worshiping with us. And uh, usually we have about a 25% of our congregation worshiping online, uh, but today I suspect it's going to be a little more than that. Uh, so welcome, and I'm glad, I'm glad we have uh, the technology to do that. We, we have, uh, if you've not received the, the cards yet, uh, you can record your attendance. Um, the ushers will, will give them to you, if, unless, you unless sometimes they already have, have given them out. And, and if you're at home, uh, there's a place on the website where you can record your attendance in, in worship, and uh, that way we can care for you. The, um, um, it's getting that uh, after today, we're going to find out who's in the Super Bowl, uh, but uh, the, the, uh, the women of this church uh, don't wait uh, for us to find out, and uh, they're already selling soup because they're, they're expecting uh, that there is going to be a Super Bowl, <clears throat> and if not, if not in football, at least they're going to have soup. And, uh, and we're going to, they're selling, uh, they're taking registrations for soup uh, now in the Narthex so, um, so we can add to our mission fund. Uh, this week on Friday night is the Teze uh, service, a prayerful meditative uh, worship service at, at 7.30. Welcome uh, to worship. Please stand as able for the call to worship. When we hunger and thirst for God, God satisfies us. When we are weak or brokenhearted, God comforts and heals us. When we seek to be peacemakers and do justice and despair of our smallness, God empowers us. God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Alleluia. <laughs> seated. I don't see Pastor Andrew. I don't know where he is. Can we roll the uh, children's moment? 
right, just gotta grab a couple more things for this kid's lesson. That should do it. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. February 19th at 9 and 10.30. It's our turn. Four kids, five kids. Are you guys doing the sermon too? I'll do this sermon. It's gonna be awesome! Two hours later. Hey guys! Guys, let me out! Guys, let me out! I thought they liked me. Um... Well, I hope that you guys are excited that youth and kids are going to take over on February 19th. If you are a youth or kid or have a youth or kid and you want to get them involved, I'm the person to see. And at this time, we are going to pray, and then I'm going to take the kids who are here, and we're going to go upstairs and scheme and plan and probably do some Sunday school as well. So let's pray together. Gracious God. We are so excited to, to serve in a church where there are youth and children and that they have fantastic role models that will help them learn how to love God, serve one another, and care for the world. God, we just pray that you will help us to honor you in all the things we say and do today. We pray these things in the name of Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us join in a time of silent and listening prayer. Let us pray. Ever-present God, you are with us no matter our state of being. When we mourn, you call us blessed. When we yearn for righteousness, you call us blessed. When we worry that we might be fools because we are open about our faith, your wisdom guides us. Open our minds and our lives this day to your manifold blessing. In your presence, may we speak your truth from our grateful hearts. Amen. We pray now for those in our midst whose petitions have come to us. Prayers of gratitude for Jacob Baker, who drove from Kenosha to share his gift of singing with us this morning. Prayers for all of the choir members for their steadfast commitment to leading worship. Prayers for healing and for better sleep. Prayers of joy for Colin getting the snowblower started this morning. A lot of us can amen that. Prayers for Tyree Nichols, who died at the hands of police brutality. May he be comforted in heaven by your loving arms, and may his family be comforted by the swiftness of justice, as well as the prayers and actions of those around them. Almighty God, our hearts cry out to you, joining the voices and hearts of all the marginalized, but especially our sisters and brothers of other races and nationalities. Help us to find ways to make a difference. 
not just while the crisis manages to capture the evening news, but for the long haul. Through Christ we pray. Lord, these are the prayers of your people. We offer these prayers of love on behalf of ourselves and our neighbors, the church and the world, in the name of Jesus our Christ, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the spirit of God who created and provides for us, who redeems us in Jesus Christ and calls us in ministry as his disciples, we come to offer ourselves and our talents to extend the ministry of the church, Loose Change this month will support the University Christian Ministry, an ecumenical ministry for the community at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee.
God, it is with joy that we bring ourselves to you and offer our lives up to you, offer these gifts to you, our talents, our time. Use them. Use them for your glory, that all the world may come to know your love. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up a mountain. He sat down, and his disciples came to him. He taught them, saying, Blessed are the 
Be full of joy and be glad because you have a great reward in heaven. In the same way, people harass the prophets who came before you. The word of God, the people of God. Thank you, choir. Pray with me. God, we hear your word. And even with all our years, it still puzzles us and challenges us. God, be with us as we, as we ponder it and, and seek to apply it in our living. We pray in, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, I think it's no wonder that churches, for the most part, have gotten smaller in the last 50 years. I, most people don't actually believe this stuff. And since we've been reading and following and challenging people to live the gospel of Jesus Christ rather than come to church to show off like we did when I was a youth. We realize that it teaches uh, lessons that are contrary to the way we live most of the time. Consider the people that we admire and vote for, and support with our spending and emulate with our behavior and spend our time watching on Sunday afternoon. We, we really believe that happiness comes from success. Happiness comes from being on a winning team. Happiness comes from being healthy and wealthy. Happiness comes from being liked by everyone. Happiness comes from having power, being in control. Happiness comes when other people, including your wife, realize or recognize that you're right even when you're not. Happiness comes from our being satisfied. If others can be satisfied, fine, but that's up to them. Why would people come to, to church to be told that this is wrong? That the way we usually live is an illusion of happiness. That is hard to accept if we've been living like this for decades or for a lifetime or even generations. And society teaches us this is the way. But now we're, we're taught that this is not true. There is no integrity if we say we believe one way and live another, which would happen if you came to church and, well, what would, be to, what would we do if we were told that it is the humble, not the proud, who are happy? It's those who mourn with others, even strangers, who are hurt, or when human civilization isn't civil, when people are senselessly gunned down in California, beaten to death in Memphis. It, it's those who seek God's will rather than their own, who, who love the other team as much as their own. Those who give not only their surplus, but their core. These people are happy. It's those who make peace with a stranger, the enemy, the one who does them harm who are happy, not only forgiving them after the fact, but before when there is disagreement. I, for one, was much happier when I forgave the people I judged to have done the college harm than when I was holding the grudge. Jesus not only talked this way, you know, he, 
walked it. I think the Son of God, with all the power of God, could have been born a prince and grown up to be a king. Have you ever wondered why he didn't? Have you ever wondered why, with all his power, he, he chose to be born in a stable by an unwed mother in a poor, occupied nation, was beholden to the gifts of others, powerless and vulnerable to the very powers he, he meant to change, and died a tragic death meant for a criminal? Ah, even as God, he became poor in spirit, humble, grieving, advocating righteousness. Yeah, Jesus lived the Beatitudes. He showed us how. He became one with the poor by making himself poor. We can too. We are happy and blessed when we do. This week, Dick Steinmetz went to the Habitat for Humanity breakfast to dedicate last year's houses and celebrate with the new owners. They also prepared for and committed to this year's work. He talked with people of our circuit sister church, Solomon Community Temple, United Methodist Church on Martin Luther King Drive. They are still without a pastor, though they remain an engaged and missional church. They have young men who would like to get into the building trades, but don't yet know how to use tools. Dick immediately thought of a way that our two churches could work together to build a house and teach the young men the use of tools and the, and the processes of building. To do this as a church, we would need several men and women of this congregation to to take 10 or 12 days this year to work as part of the Habitat team, would take funds to sponsor the house. And to do this, we need these mentors, coaches, builders, but we also need people to pray for our partners in this urban church and their youth to engage, learn skills, begin a trade and raise a family, need fewer free meals and prevent incarceration. We need people to pray for the presence and the impact of the church in Milwaukee so this becomes commonplace. What I like about it even more than teaching employable skills is the relationships we can build between our churches, both physical and spiritual, and the strength it could add to both churches. Can you imagine the blessedness of together, humbly serving, of growing in relationship with people who were strangers, each of us defined by our race and address, so that we all mourn when one is hurt. We listen to each other speak and we pray each other's prayers. This is the way our missions can work. I've often preached on the Beatitudes, and each time I look forward to the way the Scripture inspires me. Sometimes I go into the details about the nine blessings, and sometimes I talk about the translation of blessing or happy, and how this happiness is the original happiness in the way we are created. This time I was led to see the whole person Jesus was describing. These are people who love God more than themselves. People humble enough to love all neighbors, not only those who look like and agree with them. People who look for ways to bring others up, who, who reach out, who care for, who mourn with those who grieve, who dispense with their pride so they can love others genuinely. You've heard people say that God has a plan for your life. Well, it's true. I don't agree that God has worked out every detail in everyone's life. I do believe that God will always uh, clear a way for me to love, getting past the obstacles that divide us. Yes, there will be disappointments and losses and hurts. Jesus was killed. 
We are born into a sinful human state, one in which more and more people are prepared to take the life of someone they don't like or to exclude or confine those who are strange. That's not civil. God has always a way forward, always a way for us to share God's love. That's how we are made. And the more we do, the happier we will be. My wife and I are not worried about our future. God who brought us here will guide us forward. I've been around the world and haven't found yet a place where God has not been. And God is here too, calling the church into being. Those who would listen to the scriptures and, and believe them and follow them. When we humble ourselves and behave according to these teachings of Jesus, when, when we live a life of integrity, where belief meets behavior, when we seek ways to share the love of God in genuine relationships and transform our life in this way, we know the blessing of God. Look for ways to do this. Do it regularly until it becomes natural. You don't have to travel far. This month we've been supporting the University Christian Ministries. We, we send our money to this campus ministry, but it makes me think about the university scholarship singers in our choirs. Do we have any here? We've got some. How many have you gotten to know? We all benefit from their music leadership. But is Neil the only one who has invited them to his home for dinner? Or how about the international students in Milwaukee who can't go home for Easter or spring break or Thanksgiving, Diwali, Christmas, or New Year's to celebrate the completion of a, a semester or commiserate over disappointments. I, I remember being alone for Thanksgiving, which for the Japanese people around me was just another work day. We have pie makers in this church. The folks who enjoy feeding the hungry. How about, how about those who hunger for fellowship? You don't have to go to the university. And you don't have to start a big project about it or add it to your bucket list or put it in the budget. Go to the public library. You'll meet someone there. Start a conversation in the store, the coffee shop, or on the street. Dan, I like your hat. Yeah, I know Dan doesn't have a hat right on now, but <laughs> you, you see, or I was a Chicago fan too once. Where did you live? I learned that one of the homeless men that I met grew up in the same town that J.R. and I lived in when we were first married, Richton Park. I pray for him. Offer a prayer for Memphis and the Nichols family. Do something like this more and more until it becomes natural and, and you find your place of integrity where belief in the, in the way of blessing and original happiness meets our behavior. You may likely change someone's life, and certainly your own. See the, the now and forever truth in the, in the Beatitudes, the teachings of Jesus. Live it. And you and the world will be blessed. I promise. This is my prayer for the church. Amen.
some other choir members to dinner. Anybody in the choir would be open to an invitation to dinner? <laughs> oh, no, that's not fair. <laughs> well, I, I wish for you a life of happiness, of blessedness. And I believe, truly believe, that the key to that is in the teachings of Christ, like the Beatitudes. Make your life filled up with, with choir music, but filled up also with 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 an invitation, with with a conversation, with with a prayer, with a reaching out, becoming one. Because God who loves you loves the person next to you and the person you meet on the street in the coffee shop. That's the same God. So so there is no real difference. No real obstacle for that, for that love to happen. So go, go with the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. It's yours, it's ours, it's everyone's. Amen. <laughs>